Hello, and welcome to The Dungeon. I'm your host, Rob. In today's video, we're going to be looking at an Artificer Wizard Multiclass. And you may remember I did one of these a while ago, but that one was focusing mostly on the Artificer. And today I wanted to look at one that focused more on the Wizard, specifically on the Bladesinger Wizard. And we're going to be combining it with the Battlesmith Artificer, which is a lot of bees, and hopefully I don't get too tongue-tied as we go on here. Um, the Battlesmith offers us a few interesting options to the Bladesinger. Uh, number one, if we start Battlesmith, we can have proficiency on Constitution saving throws, which of course will make us proficient on our Concentration saving throws. Combined with the, with the Blade Song, which gives us an ability bonus equal to our Intelligence bonus when we're trying to make Concentration saving throws, it means that we're probably not going to fail any of our important Concentration saving throws. It, it's a very, very nice combination. It also means that we can use medium armor and a shield, at least until we get high enough to use blade song. Obviously, once we have blade song, we we can't do that. We need light armor only, and we can only you know, and we can't have a shield, right? But until that point, we can be pretty squishy and fragile. So having medium armor and a shield is definitely a lot better. Uh, of course, the main thing, like, like I already mentioned, was adding our or having our intelligence bonus to, we can use instead of strength or dexterity. If you've ever played a Hexblade Warlock, you come to realize that the uh, one stat to rule them all method is just so glorious. It almost makes you never want to go back, you know? You can have charisma as your casting stat and your attack stat, and it's just, it's just awesome. And this allows you to put your points into other stats you want to round out with your ability score increases, or to just concentrate more on feats. And those are all good things. So the one issue the Blade Singer sometimes has is that you're forced to split your points multiple ways. But if you take, say, four levels of, of uh, Artificer, you're going to be able to use Intelligence for everything, and you're not gonna be down any ability score increases. The only issue there is that four levels will also mean you'll never be able to get ninth level spells, and uh, ninth level spells are awesome. But let's be honest, a lot of campaigns never go to 20, and you might not be that concerned about it. Maybe you know your campaign is going to go to like level 10, 12, 13, 14, somewhere in that range. In which case, three levels of Artificer, maybe four, and then the rest, uh, Blade Song, is pretty good. That's a very, very strong combination. So I quite like that a lot. The Battlesmith gives us a couple other perks as well, both smaller, but definitely worth mentioning. Uh, number one is, of course, our Steel Defender. This thing is really nice if you're an Artificer. In our case, it's not going to be that useful. Um, not going to be completely worthless. It's just that its hit points scale with our Artificer levels specifically, right? So unlike our Blade Song, which scales with our Proficiency Bonus, so our Artificer Wizard, our Artificer levels are not... Uh, detracting from, from Blade Song, it's actually just still contributing at the same rate. That's not the case with the Steel Defender. All of our wizard levels are not going to help towards making that thing stronger or better or more durable at all. So it will be very squishy as we start getting to higher levels because it's still going to have like between 22 and 27 hit points most likely. But that doesn't mean that it's worthless. It can use its reaction to impose disadvantage on, on attack rolls. So if you're worried that you're going to get hit really hard, crit, uh, that's another problem that we sometimes have, right? Is that even though as a blade singer you've got a really high armor class with your blade song going, and you have a shield spell to pump that armor class up even higher, you're still susceptible to critical hits. And because you only have a d6 hit dice, uh, it sucks. <laughs> uh, in one of our campaigns, our blade singer wizard got crit twice in the same round, and he was just he was just out. <laughs> Uh, that, that was it for him, you know. He, he didn't die, he was unconscious, bleeding to death, and we managed to save him. But, yeah, he just went he just went down like that. It was fast. And that's kind of a problem when you have a D6 hit dice and you're, you know, up in the front lines a lot. So having your Steel Defender there to impose disadvantage on one of those attacks is actually really nice. Especially if you're starting to get kind of low. Uh, the other thing is that it will give us some Artificer Spells. And while the Wizard spell list is obviously better than the Artificer spell list, some of the low Artificer spells are actually pretty good. Adding a couple like 
other spells from outside our wizard spell list. There's never a miss, especially if we can get some healing spells, perhaps. But the Battlesmith, specifically in addition to the regular Artificer spell list, also has Heroism and Shield, which means we can pick up Shield from them, and that's pretty good. And then Heroism is just a great spell in general. So there are some other nice perks there as well. Oh, well, you also get proficiency with, with uh, Smith's tools, but nobody probably cares, other than repairing your Steel Defender once he's destroyed. Uh, as long as he's not dead, you can use the Mended Cantrip, though. So I would definitely suggest taking that. As for the Blade Singer themselves, Obviously, I mean, I'm not going to go into a ton of detail. We all know their main abilities. Uh, obviously, you're going to get your Blade Song. You're going to get extra attack. You're going to get Song of Defense and your Song of Victory. The main things to remember, though, from extra attack is that unlike all the other classes that get the extra attack feature, the Blade Singer is the one class that can use their regular attack and then as one of those two extra attacks, can also make a spell cantrip attack, which means that you could cast a green flame blade or a booming blade is usually what I do. But it also gives you more options. Like maybe you know that the guy you're about to hit is almost dead and there's nobody else close to you. You can finish him off and then maybe cast a firebolt or a toll of the dead on a different target that wouldn't be in melee range. And this just opens up a lot more options for your character. The other thing is, I really love this feature in a completely different way. And this is more of a, just a, a feeling type of thing. It's not necessarily mechanically, although it is mechanically great as well. But it's that with a lot of these other, like these Gish classes, the, you know, melee caster hybrid types, right? Usually on any given round of combat, you're choosing between like, am I gonna be a caster this round or am I a fighter this round, you know? And you don't really get to combine both a lot because most of your spells require your action to cast and, you know, anything that you really want to do that is probably going to be dramatic, you know, like say maybe cast a haste spell on yourself. That's going to require your action, you know. The nice thing about the Blade Singer is that you don't really have that feeling. Like every round I can be making my melee attacks and casting like booming blades and green flame blades and stuff. And it gives you that feeling that you're not choosing between the two, you're just both at the same time, all the time. And yeah, you know, I'm still gonna have to use an action to cast haste, for example. I can't quicken cast it unless I, you know, take a feed or something like that, or take a lot of sorcerer levels in addition to everything else. Um, you know, so you could do it. <laughs> uh, but you know, usually I'm not gonna be able to quicken cast stuff like that. But just the fact that I'm able to use my, my attacking in combat and be able to still cast spells at the same time really gives this class or this subclass a really special and unique feeling that a lot of the others really don't have. So just at least on a personal note, I really, really enjoy the Blade Singer a lot for that specific reason. Um, like I said, you also get to add your concentration or your constitution. Ugh your intelligence bonus to your concentration saving throws when you're using Blade Song. And because the Battlesmith is proficient on constitution saving throws, it really starts to eliminate the need for something like a Warcaster. Uh, because I don't have, you know, a shield in my other hand, I, I usually, if I'm using a Blade Singer, I usually just have my other hand free and open. And this is just because that way I don't have to worry about, you know, storing weapons and all the crazy rules that end up following around from that. But then if I have, you know, a difficult concentration saving throw to make, that can still be a little rough. But having proficiency on constitution and having my intelligence modifier added on top of that means that I'm going to have a, just a rock solid saving throw and I'm probably going to almost never fail. And then that just allows me to take, you know, other feats that I might not have uh, been able to take as much. Like maybe alert to boost up my initiative and help me to land some, you know, big attacks or some big crowd control spells before I decide to like mix it up because that's another thing I always point out don't forget you're still a wizard you can still cast like hypnotic pattern and slow and other great spells like that right it's just now while you're concentrating on your big spell instead of just you know picking away like hypnotic pattern is a great example right you cast hypnotic pattern you hit a bunch of guys a bunch of them make the saving throw a bunch of them fail so now you're just trying to pick off all the ones that fail right but you can't really cast other concentration spells because you're concentrating on hypnotic pattern. 
You also don't want to follow this up with a bunch of AOE spells like Fireball because that's going to break Hypnotic Pattern on all the guys that you're already, you know, have, have crowd controlled. But on the other hand, things like Fireball just kind of suck as you get to higher and higher levels. The scaling on it's very poor, you know, you're not really getting, like, as you get magical weapons, those bonuses and their effects are all getting added to your attacks, right? But when you're using a Firebolt, it's, maybe you get an extra dice, you know, that's okay, but it's not spectacular. You know, the damage on your Firebolt is scaling quite slowly, the monster hit points are scaling like that, and it just starts to fall behind. But the fact that you can get in there with your magic rapier or whatever you're using, for example, and, you know, attack guys with that, you're getting those magical item bonuses, maybe it has an app on hit effect, or maybe it's got like a frost blade property or something like that, right? So you're doing some extra cold damage on top of that melee attack. And then you're able to follow that up with another one and you do like a green flame blade or a booming blade on top of that. And then you're getting the scale and cantrip damage that you would have gotten from say a firebolt, but now it's getting added on top of your weapon damage. And it just allows you to be way, way more like competitive with other classes for your damage for that like round to round sustained damage while you're concentrating on whatever your big spell was, right? So anyways, that's a giant detour from where I meant to go, but that's okay. I think it's a helpful example, hopefully. So that's one thing I really love about the class is that you don't feel like you're just falling back on cantrips because you, you know, are concentrating on something better. Now you don't really have anything to do round by round. It's like, well, yeah, I am using my cantrip round by round. And I'm also smashing guys in the face with my sword and, uh, you know, attacking twice around. So I think that they're really, really solid. Song of Defense, of course, is pretty decent. When you take damage, you can use a reaction to expand a spell slot and reduce that damage to you by an amount equal to five times the spell slot's level. I usually use this actually on crits. <laughs> um, or if I have something that I really need to make sure I don't lose concentration on and I got pretty hard, like hit pretty hard, like maybe I got hit by a fire giant, right? Uh, they tend to hit for a lot of damage. I might want to use something like this to help negate some of that damage, right? Now, obviously I prefer to just cast shield if I knew that that was going to help them miss me, but they have a big attack bonus. Maybe that's not going to be enough, right? Maybe I'm actually going to have to take the hit and just reduce the damage instead. I like that I have the option. Um, Song of Victory, of course, is awesome. Add your intelligence bonus to your damage with your melee weapon attacks while your blade song is active. This is awesome. It's basically kind of like Life Drinker for Warlocks. Maybe not quite as good, but it's very, very close. We get it a couple levels later, and they just get it to all their attacks with the patch weapon. We get it when we're only using Blade Song, but we probably will have Blade Song active a lot of the time. Uh, that brings me to another point, though, I should probably mention. Um, one great thing about the Blade Singer is that as long as Blade Song is active, you are just a machine in combat. The problem is that because we only have a Blade Songs equal to our proficiency bonus, this isn't always the fastest building uh, mechanic, let's just say, right? And if I'm doing something like big deep dungeon delves, right? Like maybe we're doing something like Dungeon of Mad Mage, for example, right? A lot of times, just in a normal campaign, you might have a couple of encounters, you short rest. A couple more, you long rest for the night. That doesn't really happen in dungeons. You might go seven or 10 or 15 encounters in a row before you're able to rest. And I personally, as a dungeon master, I don't like to do this to my players all the time because I want it to be special when I do. But a lot of times, I do like to put them on the clock and give them a time limit. Like, you guys have to complete this, you know, because the world's going to end if you don't, you know, do whatever, right? You know, and kind of give them, like, you know, they have to interrupt the ritual, but the ritual's already started, and they've got X amount of time to get there. Maybe it's your typical five-room dungeon, and but they've got to get through four other rooms before they can get there. They can't just fight and then rest, right? Like, and the players know they're on the clock, which helps to build up that tension and make things a little more dramatic. But it also means that you have to start budgeting your blade songs. You can't just be throwing it out there every single fight, at least not in these quick cases, right? Sometimes you can, in which case the blade singer is even better. Uh, but I do think that sometimes you have to start using it more strategically. And I wanted to mention 
that this is one thing where I think a lot of people forget that you're also a wizard. You're not just some melee fighter that can use a booming blade in addition to a regular stabby stab attack, right? You still have spells like Mirror Image or Blur or Blink or any of these other great defensive spells which can really help you to get through those combats where you think, I don't know if I want to use Blade Song in this fight, but I also don't want to take a whole bunch of damage. <laughs> So, you know, something like a mirror image spell can be a great alternative to that, especially as you get to a higher level. A second level spell slot isn't a big deal, you know? If you have fifth or sixth or seventh level spell slots, I mean, what, do you, what else are you gonna do with a second level spell slot? You might as well do something like that. And I find that that's one place where a lot of uh, Blade Singer players, in fact, just like Gish characters in general, they, they are so focused on the hand-to-hand -hand combat aspect of the character that they forget that, you know, oh yeah, I still have Wall of Force, because I'm a wizard, and I'm awesome. Uh, I still have Teleport, I still have Force Cage, you know, I have whatever else, right? Hypnotic Pattern, the list never ends, you know? So, you have the greatest spell list, probably in the entire game. Take advantage of it, you know, don't be afraid to use some of those big spells, and then, you know, engage in, in your hand-to-hand, -hand, fisticuffs, essentially, uh, once you've got your, you know, your big spell out of the way, and you know, like, this is what I'm going to do this fight. I'm going to cast Hypnotic Pattern, and then I'm going to go hand to hand from that from that point on, right? That makes perfect sense to me, and it's also a very fun play style, by the way. But you know, that's when I want to make sure. Maybe I don't want to get hit a lot. I'm going to use Blade Song in this fight. This fight, I don't really have anything I'm concentrating on, so I don't really have to worry about it. I'm just going to throw out a Mirror Image spell on myself in round one, and you know try to not to take any damage, and I'll just mix it up and do what damage I can after that. And, you know, I think that's perfectly solid as well. Uh, I wanted to go over the infusion choices for the Battlesmith. If you only have three or four levels of Battlesmith, you do not have a lot of options. But there are a few that kind of stood out to me. I just looked at the list, I wrote down like five. I'm sure there's way more on there that are probably worth mentioning, but these were the five I chose. Number one, and by far the best in my opinion, the Bag of Holding. You can never have enough Bags of Holding. And, uh, you know, that's just a great thing to be able to make. Uh, Alchemy Jug. I don't usually worry about this, but if I'm in like a desert survival type campaign, then this could be very, very essential. Goggles of Night. If you don't have night vision, this is awesome. Wand of Secrets. If nobody in your party has good perception score or took the uh, perception skill, Wand of Secrets is awesome. But if everybody took Perception, like you probably should have, since it's the best uh, skill in the game, generally speaking, uh, then you don't have to worry about it. But I thought I'd at least mention it. And the last one that really stood out to me was the Cap of Water Breathing. Now, obviously, this is best if you know you're going to have to breathe underwater, maybe. It's kind of a little late once you're already underwater and you're drowning to death to make a Cap of Water Breathing. But, you know, if you have some downtime, maybe you might want to, you know, just to be safe if you think that this could be an issue for you. So those were the ones that stood out to me. Like I said, there's, there's a bunch of other good ones. I also realized while I was preparing this video that for some reason, I never made my Artificer spell list part two. I did uh, the core spell list and then I was gonna do my choices for battles, uh, or Artificer spells, sorry, and I was gonna go through all the different subclasses. For some reason, I just never did that. So hopefully, now that I've uh, become aware of that, I will make that video in the next couple of days, hopefully. I'll try to fit it into my schedule here. Um, I do have a holiday coming up, so hopefully that will happen. Uh, so anyways, I'm going to do that. I also wanted to start doing, now that my current campaign is basically wrapping up, it's basically finishing tonight, in fact, um, I wanted to just maybe just do like a series of like campaign diaries and talk about the last campaign, which I just call the White Spire campaign, and then this campaign, which I'm tentatively calling the Broken Lands campaign, and uh, the two campaigns end up being quite intertwined. My players didn't really realize it at first, but they were both in the same game world. It's just that they were started on different continents, right? So the first party was up by White Spire, the one big city. This party was on a completely different continent, all started at level one, and had no clue that they were even in the same game world. Although there were a lot of clues that they just didn't pick up on because they didn't pay enough attention. But that's okay. Actually, I shouldn't say that. One of the players did figure it out without any prompting. 
Uh, so kudos to him. Way to go, Brandon. Um, as for the diaries, I, I'm probably not going to do like a lot of depth on. Well, I mean, I probably am because it's me, and I'll probably just start rambling about stuff. But my basic idea is to cover like each tier of play in one video. So like levels one to four will be one, and the next tier, the next tier, the next year. And then I'll talk. I'll talk about some of the concepts and ideas as well. Because hopefully, in my mad ramblings, there'll be something useful for you know dungeon masters who are like, ooh, hey, I kind of like that idea. Um, I will tell you that the big fight that we had last week was kind of like the culmination of, of the two campaigns. The, one, the, the new party actually finds and rescues the original party from this like extra dimensional prison that they've been locked in. And both parties got to do like two different missions simultaneously. So at one point they had to kind of coordinate because the one group had one artifact that had to be destroyed and the other group had another artifact that they needed to be destroyed like within seconds of each other. So basically I said in the same round of combat, right? So the party was using like sending or whatever it was, the one inter interplanar communication spell. And then it was like one round of combat with the one fight, one round of combat with the other fight, and we were just kind of like jumping back and forth. And then eventually, but after that mission was successful, the party joined up to take down the one like big bad evil god that they'd been, you know, kind of trying to deal with. And it was basically just a 10 man against the one god and he had like seven legendary actions because I wanted him to be like really tough. And I knew that there were gonna be 10 players, right? So uh, the problem was, this all sounds like grand and epic. Like, oh man, you had like two fights going on at the same time with like, and all the players got to play their party from the previous campaign and their players from the new campaign, right? So they were playing two characters each for the last few game sessions. And uh, like I said, this, in my mind, this is just like, gets me the most epic conclusion to a campaign ever and it was still pretty epic I'm not trying to sell it short I know everyone had a pretty good time but it also meant that the combat took forever forever 10 player characters seven legendary actions per round from the villain like oh my goodness it was just a nightmare and then like even the previous fight where it's like the two fights going on at once they have like multiple enemies and some of them were supposed to have legendary actions, but I just like reskinned a bunch of the stuff and kind of removed some of the legendary actions. Again, because the fights were taking forever, but I also like upped their hit points in a few cases just to make things like more dramatic. But it ended up being really, really good. Not trying to, you know, say anything bad on that front, but just, like I said, it was a lot of combat. So, uh, I think in the future, I probably won't be trying this idea again, just because, you know, it's sometimes it's nice to play for four hours and not have it just be two fights, you know, for the entire game session. Um, but still, you know, I think it was a great idea. And it, you know, it was at least interesting to try anyways. You don't know until you've tried it. Um, anyways, I'll be covering all that stuff in more detail when I talk about those campaigns or whatever. And I'm going to put those videos on the side. They're not going to take the place of the main like weekly videos or anything like that. But I just want to start making like more content and stuff. And even if I have to, you know, make a video at 11 o'clock at night when everybody else in the family is asleep, then, uh, you know, so be it. It's, it's fine. It's fine. You know, if it takes me a couple of days to edit it and finally get it on and there's no like actual production schedule. That's okay. Those are just the side videos. We'll still have the main ones. I just want to, you know, start making more stuff, right? So I think that'll be fun. Um, anyways, I've rambled on enough, and we finished talking about the artificer a good seven or eight minutes ago. So uh, you know, I think it's about time to end the video. As always, though, feel free to like, subscribe, ring the bell for notifications, and most importantly, like I always say, leave me your comments in the comment section. I love reading people's comments. It does sometimes take me a while to get to them, I apologize, but I promise you, because the channel is still very small, I do literally read every single comment I get. Good, bad, indifferent, it doesn't matter, I read them all, right? And any feedback I get is good. I also love that, you know, a lot of times I'll see somebody ask a question, and then other subscribers are like discussing the things with them, you know? And I'm just like, man, it's, it's just so interesting and cool to me that there's like this little tiny community in our own little part of the internet here where people, and it's usually the same people in a lot of cases, are all like talking and chatting back and forth and giving each other ideas and stuff. And I just kind of really love that aspect of having a YouTube channel. I think that's really neat. 
that you know we can kind of discuss those kind of things right so anyways that's everything thank you for watching and i'll see you next time bye